Shalom to everybody. We are in Rabbi Nachman, and uh, what an amazing concept we're learning about, about the uh, Chamber of Exchanges. Fascinating. The Torah has chamber upon chamber upon chamber upon chamber. And when you start learning Torah, especially in an advanced way, you see that the Torah is taking on this journey from one place to the next place to the next place to the next place. And you go into secret passageways and then you go and treasure troves and it, it takes you places. Then you meet people and it, you go on this unbelievable galactic journey. And like we mentioned, wherever, wherever you think Elon Musk can take you, that's nothing compared to what's, what you really can achieve uh, through Torah learning. And we gave a caveat which was, you have to be careful because you can get into a chamber. And we said, we quoted the prophet yesterday, Isaiah, that said, woe to the one that makes the things that are dark light and the things that are light dark. And the one who says that good is bad and bad is good. And that sweet is bitter and bitter is sweet. Woe. Not like, whoa, but woe, W-O-E. Biblical woe, that it's not good. You're not going in a good direction if you're mixing those things up. And a person has to be very concerned that am I getting the right, uh, am I getting the right information? Is this really good or is this good that's been disguised as evil? Is this... Uh, is this really coming from an authentic place? And Rabbi Nachman ex explained that when you go through these palaces and these chambers, sometimes when you pull, you know, you open up the, the, the door and you're thinking about an idea in Taira and you, you think you got the truth, it might be that that was flipped, that the, the true truth was taken and the falseness was put into your mind because that's the chamber of exchanges. And a person who really gets lost in that chamber, he could be sucked in there for God forbid a long time and just keep saying false things in the name of Torah. So if Nachman's gonna give us a bit of a way out, I already kind of jumped the gun to tell you guys the main thing is to dive into Hashem. Please Hashem, please. I don't wanna get caught in the chamber of exchanges. I want true Torah, please. By the way, one of the themes in Breslov is just having a very pure heart and not being so complicated, just they say, a pasha is not so pasha. A yid that just, Hashem, please, please, let, let me just have true Torah. Nothing complicated. Breast love, you'll notice that a lot of the themes, it's very, it's like the deepest Torah. So you open up and look at them around, you're like, what do you mean? Nothing complicated? These are very, but the underlying message of everything is just simple. Just be a simple Good you. Leave all the other stuff. Uh, don't get, don't get uh, caught up. Don't let them sell you their wares. They try to make everything complicated. One of the best ways to know that I'm really getting the emiss. The emiss is Hashem, please. Just, just give me the true emiss of Torah. The emiss. And you can cry. Hashem, please. The emiss. And go to real tzaddikim. Go to tzaddikim and... And say, please, I just, I don't want to get caught in this chamber. And look what the Rebbe says. He's going to make it a little bit more, some of these ideas are a little bit higher. We're going to bring them down a little bit. Look inside. The reason why we have the chamber of exchanges in the first place is because you have free will at every single point in your life. So you think maybe you're saying something, you really got an idea in Torah, but that could be totally false, which means... Why would Hashem do that? The answer is, in order to give you free will. Are you going to be fooled by that message? Are you going to see beyond the, on the, the, the smoke screen? Or, God forbid, get caught up in the smoke screen. When Mashiach comes, all the smoke is just going to... Evil is going to dissipate like smoke. That's what we say. I always love that visualization. Because the smoke looks so real, right? But the smoke just dissipates. Reish it's a continuation from yesterday. The Ashinid Mila Adam last Sangha Gadaila. 
even if he thinks he just had such a good insight. Wow! You should know in the Chamber of Exchanges, there's also Groysa Tyrants. There's big stuff over there. But it could be totally from the side of the left side, not the good side. It could be totally, it's very tricky. You have to be very careful that you're getting the right information. Even though it could really feel like, wow, I have to get a shear on this. I have to tell the world what amazing truths that I found. But it could be nothing more than the, the confusion of the dark side. When I was young, they, they had this Simpsons episode. I always dive into Hashem if I only knew Mishnayas like I know Simpsons episodes. But there was, a, there was a guy who came into Springfield to do the monorail. You got remember that guy? Okay, I feel like I'm so outdated nowadays. I could be a Zayda with Simpsons. It's like, this is like, like rather like from like 80s? Yeah, boys, in a Simpsons. I don't think it's around anymore. Is it around? Yeah. Like reruns, they don't make new stuff, do they? Yeah. New stuff? Yeah, 40 seasons. 40 seasons. It's like that. I'm like from the first year. So, so there was like this monorail guy. He came into Springfield and it was like, he looked, he had like this pinstripe power suit on. And he sold them this amazing, they're like, dude, we're going to save your town. It's going to be this fast system. And, was, and they got it on pump. Monorail, 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 monorail. Wow. And everyone's like, but they threw all their money. This is going to be the best thing ever. And the mayor was like, well, the monorail is going to save the city. And of course, he cut corners and everything was breaking down. And like the whole thing was just a mess. And you just, like one of the last scenes, you just see him like booking town and like money's coming out of his suitcases. And that was it. So... A lot of life is like that. What we're talking about in the chamber of exchanges is you're gonna get some guy that's gonna try and sell you something and you don't, don't get duped by what's being sold. You have to be able to see beyond the, the power suit, to see beyond the credentials, you have to see beyond the surface to know is this really amnestic or is this from the monorail salesman, the used car salesman that looks so, right, he looks like Looks so fresh, looks so, but there's something, uh, there's something under the hood that's, that's a lemon. Even if he seems that he's offering very fancy stuff. You ever heard the expression, you know, it's too good to be true? Because it's true, <laughs> it is too good. No, no, it, it seems so good. No, no, no. It's, Oh, the best one, by the way, this is the best one, free. It's free? Oh, please sign me up. If something's free, you run away. Free? I'm out of here. Nothing's free. You know what says free? The other side, the dark side. Free? It's free? Free? Nothing's free. Nothing's free. What's my proof? It's a pasuk in Eiv. Adam la amal you A guy, you have to schwitz in this world. There's nothing free. Whatever you have, you have to work for, you have to schwitz for. But he's saying amazing things. Even in this place, you have to schwitz a little bit. So here's where it gets tricky. I schwitzed. I, I, I did do something and it could still be. I could get confused in these chambers because they exchange. Now watch this. Gam bezeyesh kama vechines. Kamoi lamashal. Watch this. Amazing. Rabbi Nathan. Let me give an example just to give you a feeling of what it means that when you get to a certain chamber, they offer you something, but it's not the real thing. You have to be careful of it. Lamashal, because because tevas odam. Imagine I do the following. Do we have any things here? Okay. I'm going to write the following. What word is that? Adam. Is that a man? Okay, that's a very Kabbalistic answer. Is that is that is that a human being? No. <laughs> no. I'm naked, but watch this. You guys ready for a human being?
No peeping? <laughs> I present to you, Man! You're in today's gym, obviously. It's Man, right? No. No? Look, it's Man! I, I'm not gonna do this. But what if I carved a man? A marble, a, a Michelangelo. I, I, be, behold, it's man! No? Look at him now. The muscle. For example, when I write the word man, I know when I write the word man, I'm hinting to man. But that's not man, it's just a hint to man. There's no, you don't, there's not the likeness of man, it's not there. It's a hint to man. And then there's those people who draw man. And there you see a little bit more the likeness of man. Of course, this, you like the artwork? There's a little bit more than the word. There you're already, it's reminding you of things, you're seeing ish gains. You, it, it's, it's the likeness a little bit more. Then there's those who carve a man out of wood or marble. Is that even more in the likeness of? Yeah. It's closer, wow. But is it man? Woman? Is it a human? And you see even more the likeness of man there. And I got something better. Nowadays, if Rabnath was writing this, I, I show you like a... The, the, we had a, an exhibit in Canada, I think it went around the world, what was it called? Body Works. It was like a medical exhibit where they showed you like they put people, human beings together like with, with like the inside of them, with no flesh basically. Shmuel is what I'm talking about. Like yeah. the heart and the lungs. The and the expedition. Yeah. It's like the name of the Literally like you saw the human being. It was like a, they stuck basically guts together. Not so halachically. But, and behold man. Is that man? But it's so close. And nowadays you, they could do something like 3D on the on the computer, liquid screen with the glasses, man. And what is it called? Uh, yeah. Oculus Oculus uh, Prime. Oh, let me Oculus Prime, man. <laughs> Ready Player One is that. That's what they're trying to do to us. You understand? Trying to make the fake world the real world. Look, it's man, I'll show you man. Is that man? What's man? Right here. Like I say, FaceTime. This is FaceTime. You look somebody in the face. This is real FaceTime. This is FaceTime. To actually see a human being. And it's very, very hard because nowadays everything is moving online. Everything is so just screens. So we're losing touch with men. And just in, in general, losing touch with just the, con the human contact. So Rav Nachman says, look at the last line here. All these things, writing the word, the, the artwork, this will be for sale after the class. Uh, the sculpture, the, the exhibit, the Oculus Prime, all of that is trying to tell you that it's man. But it's not man. It's not a human. It's a hint to it, but it's not the thing. Only the man himself, a human being, is the real thing. Kamoi came. Now look at this. So too. Yesh kame chidushin shel tire. There's certain chidushim of tire that you could write, that you could come up with. Shehem rak kamoi pinkus. A person could get an idea of tire. But it's just like a notebook. It's not Torah. It's like he wrote the word Torah. Is that Torah? 
It's like writing the word man compared to a human being. You see how far it is? It's hinting to something. But Rabbi Nachman saying as a person from the Chamber of Exchanges, God forbid, could think that the word Taira is Taira. Just like the word, writing the word man, behold, man. And the exhibit is man. That's not man, this is man, a human being, you know, like that you could talk to, that's a real person. Not a virtual reality, human beings, a real person. There's something about the Chamber of Exchanges that convinces a person on different levels that he has Torah Mamish, but it's compared to having a hint of it, like a remis to Torah. It's not the thing, it's like a hint of Torah. And you have to be careful, am I getting Torah Mamish, or am I getting these hints of what Torah is? It's like you have a notebook, but Torah is, is, is like man, he actually compares Man and Tyre bring a script, a, a scriptural source. Tevis Adam Levan. The is like a man. There's also reasons for this. Yes. Um, the, the hint itself of Torah isn't necessarily yet like opposing it, though. You know, it's just not exactly the full picture. So, so it's he thinks that he has Torah. But Rav Nachman's saying, it's as foolish of you to think that as, as if saying that this is man. It's so far from it. And the problem is, is that you could think that this is man. What is man? Oh, man is a guy that's blue, that has, I don't know, nice eyelashes, <laughs> missing hair, kind of keeper. Um, he seems to be way out of proportion over here. You could, you could start defining man based on this. This is just a hint. This is just a remnant of man. But this could actually start to define man. So too, you're t and that's going to make, lead to errors. So you could take away from it all. Like, oh, yeah, where, where's the human? Oh, oh, man means emotionless. Because look, he's, well, he's smiling, but he doesn't, he only smiles. Or he doesn't, he's so cold and unfeeling. He's a piece of marble, he's a piece of stone. You could think, oh, the Torah is dead on a page. Classic one. What's the Torah? Oh, it's just, it's written, it, 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 that's it. You know what the Torah says? Kiss from Aluach Libecha. You know what the Torah is? It's on your heart. Your heart is, your heart's fleshy. Your heart is alive. Obviously, Hashem doesn't mean rip open and start writing things with a quill on your heart. It's figurative. It means the Torah, it's not penetrating a heart of flesh, if it's not alive, you, you, whoa, and you think it's just something in a book? You are so far from Tyra. It's like saying this is man, but in the Chamber of Exchanges, they flip things. And God forbid a person, if they get caught there, could think that I've got the Tyra. They could have not began from the beginning. This takes a lot of work and, and a lot of just crying out. And he's comparing now Tyra and man. Like the Pasuk says, Zeus Tyra Sa'ad. This is the Torah of man when he shall die in a tent. And the Gemara in Shabbos on Pei Gimel Bey says that how do you really get Torah when you kill yourself for Torah? And your mamish give everything for Torah. Zayis Torah sa'adam ki yomus oil. That the Torah is only meskayim. When you're meimis atz my bed. When you kill, I want the Torah. Shem, please, but emis. The emis, I want your Torah. I want the Torah. I want that relationship. Please, I want a heart of flesh. I want the Torah. That allows you to sift through these chambers of exchanges to get out of it and then into the next chamber that's true. And not to get caught up. Yeshu nechnas adam. It's not adam. You, you, maybe you have the Torah, it's not just the word Torah. You think the Torah is now just a book. Or you think the Torah is something like an exhibit, a Torah exhibit. The Torah is something that's alive. It's alive in our hearts. So alive. That's why Asaph, he had all the Torah. You know that? His head went into the Marasamach Pelah. But with all the Torah, he knew more Torah than Ace than Yaakov. That's what it says. He was smarter than Yaakov. But he was still abusing people. He was still committing horrible crimes. So the Torah didn't affect him. You can know all the Torah in the world, but your kid calls you. So, no, sorry, I'm too busy. I got that stuff going on. Stuff going on. And some uh, rich guy comes, oh, how are you? Oh, 
Well, your kid just, your kid walked in, you're like, you know, I'm busy. What, what, you monster, what are you? Yeah, you got all the Torah, but it's not, it's like thinking that this is men. You thought that was the Torah, it's not the Torah. That's all from the chamber of exchanges. That something's off, way off. And then they'll say to him, but I have to support the family, and it's all for you. Yeah, come on, it's for me. Yeah. If it was for me, then, you know, you, you play catch with me, Dad. Apple P came in, say, oh, I'm sorry, I just got emotional, you know, like, I'm a little bit dramatic, but play catch with your kids. It's very important. They need that. The real Torah is like Adam. Also, Reb Nathan's comparing Adam and Torah because the Torah has 613 mitzvahs and Adam has 613 limbs and major blood vessels. And the Torah, just like all 613 work in conjunction as one unit, so to your body, it's a holistic system. It all works together. It's all one thing working together to get the real Torah. It has to be like an Adam. It's the mamish daven for it, like a mamish mensch. That's what it means. Zeus had Torah Adam. Zeus had Torah Daika. Then you have the Torah when it's like a man. When you see Adam. Hainu rak Zeus had Torah Amitis Subachinus Adam. Only when it's mamish like a man. When it's, when it's I mean, like a human. But it's only that you see it so clear. Not that it's like a, I thought it was it, but it's not it. It's like as far as this being a man. And that's when all God forbid the bad and the mistakes come from. Bizarat Hashem, tomorrow we're gonna finish this piece. He's only begun. Rav Nachman's gonna talk about going to see a comedy show. Let's see where the Rebbe takes us. Have a wonderful day. We should deserve the Mashiach. Amen. Call to.